um, what is the future of virtual production? And I'm going to start by Rick. I want to hear all of you. <laughs> <laughs> like, hear your opinions. Well, it's, uh, it's almost endless. You know, uh, Chad talked about, you know, with Maya, you can model things. But uh, volumetric capture is a side route. Uh, here, when we talk about virtual production, we're talking about bringing the Unreal Engine environment out so that we can all work with it. In volumetric capture, we're taking real-world objects and putting them in. Okay. So we basically take a studio and surround it with like 32 cameras evenly lit, and you can put a person, you can put an object in that studio and capture it from all sides and then Amazing. put it right into the game the engine. Game it, and you yes. can do that in real time. So all the modeling we had to do, we for nine windows, we ran around and shopped furniture from the school. Then the modelers went and replicated it. So if we were shooting this way and we didn't have room, we could put digital furniture in the scene. If we had volumetric capture, we would just put it in the studio, capture it, throw it in there, and we could do it like that. Wow. Um, we could do it with people. And then you could rig them the way a, 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 a character animator or rigger would do. You could rig your, you. Uh, and we talk about metahumans. The, those captures will look much better oh than the metahuman <laughs> because they're, they're from the actual individual. Yeah. Right. So that I think that's one future okay. uh, that we could really look forward to. So rigging. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, so I, I, I always end up going back like to the VR and gaming side, right? Because yes. that's like my core. But I just imagine just from the technology, and I don't even know if you would call it virtual production, but the screens are going to get cheap enough to where I imagine, you know, essentially real life holodeck, Star, Star Trek holodeck. Um, you know, escape room is the thing that comes to mind right off the bat. Ooh, Use yes. is you can sort of build, you could build these sort of elaborate places that you're in, even though you're really only dealing with these, these areas here. Um, and so change themes really easily, you know, and so without having to completely build a whole brand new thing, you know, you just bring in the set pieces, but then you're like, no, now it's sci-fi or it's old West or whatever. Um, so, you know, that theme park, you know, there's a lot of uses where you're like, hey, we want real time feedback on these really large, you know, high res screens. Um, so anything that that come along. Um, so that's why, you know, it says it's endless because there's a million different uses for it and the prices are just going to keep coming down. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Chad mentioned like the, the Quixel Megascans library, and that's one of the things I'm really excited about is that that to continue to expand because there's such a demand for high quality resolution images or 3D assets. Um, so I, I look forward to just looking. I mean, right now there's quite a bit out there that you can get for free, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to only expand even further. So those options for artists. Um, which is, uh, you know, some people might think of it as replacing the artist, but the artist is there to create the unique assets um, that aren't found in real life. Um, so they still have a, have a role to play in that. Um, and then all the background, like the, the rocks, the, you know, things like that, you can, still, you can find for free and implement them easily. So I'm excited for that library to continue to expand. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. I'm inspired here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they're talking, I'm like thinking about all these things. I, <laughs> I think for me, it's the, like right now you're only seeing this, you know, you're like, oh, they used on Ant-Man, they used on Mandalorian, they used on all this stuff. To me, the, the future of this is with the independent film and the student film and low-end commercials and stuff like that because they, they're now endless as long as they can take the time to do the proper pre-production because everything used to be done in post is now done ahead of time. So as long as you had to take that time for that proper pre-production, you can literally write and be anywhere you need to be. There's no need to be Ridley Scott to make Alien anymore. Mm -hmm. you, can, <laughs> you can rent a stage like this for you know, an eighth of the price of that movie and make Alien and have just as good of looking sets and just as good of looking you know, props and everything. So for me, the future is really the independent filmmaker and like the, the people that don't have the big money.